What's up, B Squad? It is your boy JB, and we are here today with the review for Power Book 3 Raising Canaan Season 2, Episode 2. Mind your business is the name of the episode, you guys. So, before we go ahead and just get into this review, if you guys are watching this video or any other on my channel and you guys aren't yet subscribed, then I need you guys to do me a solid favor and stop taking me out on this date and having me pay for it at the end of it. You guys know you can do me that favor by liking the video, subscribing to the channel, turning on your post notifications, sharing the video, you guys. And with that out of the way, without further ado, let's discuss Raising Canaan, shall we? All right, you guys, so I'm not going to start up where the episode began. I'm going to start up where we see Jukebox and Canaan. So Jukebox and Canaan, they're watching TV and Canaan is crying, right? So Jukebox is making fun of him and basically telling him like, hey, whatever happens, don't let nobody change who you are. I was like, huh, girl, that's a whole lot of foreshadowing because he is going to turn into a whole different person and that person is going to pop your ass when y'all get older. So let me give you that full warning right now. And I just tweeted this on Twitter recently, you guys. So with the characters of Jukebox and Kanan, I wonder how did we get to the Jukebox and the Kanan that we got in the original power. Like Jukebox in the original power, she was a dirty cop. I, I said it last season and I still believe it to be how I know how she's going to get into being a cop. I'm pretty sure it's going to be through Burke. But I do wonder how does she go about becoming the dirty cop that she is. And then also when it comes down to Kanan, Kanan is, a, I mean, from what you see, he's a soft, lovable person. He, I mean, he, he, he kind of, we can see why he and Tariq had the relationship that they had because he is much like Tariq. But I just wonder where did that ruthless side of Kanan come from? Him, you know, unliving Sean, the things that Kanan did in the original power. How do we get to this Kanan? How do we get to that Kanan from this Kanan? And I wonder if when we meet Ghost and we meet Tommy, will that shed a little bit more light on how he became the person that we know currently, right? So then we see Kanan. So Kanan went over to Famous House. So Jessica, he's asking Jessica, like, where's Kanan? She's like, she's, he's upstairs with some skeezer. And, and but my mom comes home and she sees him in there with that girl. She's going to kick him out, so you go talk to your boy. So, Kanan went upstairs to try to wake Fame up. Fame is high as hell, so he can't. He couldn't wake him up, so he twisted his nipple. He's like, damn it, don't twist my nipple. So, he was like, you got to get that girl. And just like, you got to get that little girl out of here. So, he tries to wake her up. He said, he tries to wake her up. He doesn't even know her name, by the way. So, he tells her she got to go, but too late. Mama comes in the house, and she was like, uh-uh, Fame. You and that little helper, y'all both got to go. And she's like, I know that you stole money from me. He was like, where am I going to go? She's like, quite honestly, fame, I don't give a damn where you go. So then we do see Jukebox. So she's at home and Rock came into the room where she is. And Rock asked her how she saw Kane. And she says he's over at Fame's house. But whenever he gets back in, I tell him that you're looking for him. So then she says, do you remember my mom? She's like, yeah. She's like, what do you remember about her? She's like, the thing that I remember about, about Kenya is the fact that, you know, she she had a great voice just like yours she's the one that gave you that gift so then they talk about her as a mother and rock is basically telling her she feels maybe your mother felt like she couldn't be a good enough mother to you so she now girl i don't know how that woman could feel like she wasn't a good enough mother to leave her child with somebody like a marvin baby you could call me the world's worst parent in the world but i would not leave my child with marvin marvin would be the last person in this world I will leave my child with. Mm -mm. Child, first of all, how does she, how, how does she and Marvin even come to be? Because, baby, like I said, Marvin is the absolute worst and the last person that I would have left jukebox with. You don't, you think, uh, uh, how did her mama think she would be a, a terrible parent when the the father of your child is deeply involved in the drug game with his sister and his baby brother? Girl, anybody is a better parent than him. Just saying. He, he's in a drug game with his, his his little sister and his little brother. He has a terrible temper. He's homophobic. Like, there's a lot of things about Marvin. Baby, I would have never left my child with the likes of a Marvin. 
Hail to the nah. Hail to the now. To the no no no. So then we see Kanan and Fame. So Fame is trying to figure out like what the fuck, where am I gonna go? He asked Kanan could he stay with them and he was like, you know, I could sleep in the bathtub, he just throwing me a sheet in there. Kanan was like, My mom is our we already got jukebox staying with us and my mom is big on family. Now, I saw a tweet about you know, I saw a tweet about um someone said that, you know, with Rock being so big on family, how did Kanan do the things that he did? Rock is not big on family. Like let's let's put that out there. Rock is not like one hundred percent big on family. Rock is big on manipulation. Rock manipulates the people around her and it happens to be her family. Rock manipulates her family to do the things that benefit Raquel. That's really what it is. She I mean, I'm not gonna sit here and say that she doesn't love Kanan. I'm not gonna sit here and say she does she doesn't I'm not gonna say she doesn't love Kanan, Lou, and Marvin. But what Rock is good at is manipulating people to do the things that she wants them to do for her. So, I don't necessarily know if Rock is that big on family. I know she's big on manipulation. That is one thing I know about her. She is great at manipulation, right? So, Fame is wondering if he could sell some of his mixtapes, right? And get a little bit of money so that way he can get a room to stay in. And Kana was like, but if they ain't been selling up until this point, what makes you think people are going to buy them? I'm like, exactly. That's just like, you know, repackaging some bullshit and just saying, oh, it's, it's, the, uh, it's the new and updated version. If it was shit the first time, it's still currently shit. So we see them at the studio. They were taking the mixtapes and Lou was there. He was like, y'all, so y'all still on my shit. But it's like, you know what? Keep it. But he told fame at the same time that. What you need to do is that you need to stop smoking and you need to get, you need to start writing. If you do that, I will put you in the studio. Now, next up, we see Nicole's mother. So she's back. Nicole's mother is pissed off about the fact that they let Jukebox go because she feels that Jukebox is the reason that Nicole is not with us anymore. I'm like, girl, that ain't the case. Your daughter found them drugs, stole them drugs, and took them drugs herself. And she OD'd. That ain't got nothing to do with jukebox. So she wants Burke fired, but her captain defended her. And, and after, you know, Nicole's mother left, she's like, my daughter's blood is on all of your hands. It's on your hands too, baby. So Burke thanks the captain for standing up for her. He says, I ain't defend you. He said, I'm defending, the, um, defending this station. He says, because from where I'm sitting at, it looks like you fucked it up. You know who she gives me a vibe of? Angela Valdez. She is another version of Angela Valdez. And you guys know I can't stand that heifer. Thank God she ain't with us no more. Who child, the day that Angela left this earth, I was so happy. <laughs> that is sad that I'm saying I was happy the day that Angela was no longer living. So we see Famous and we see um Kanan. So you guys remember, Kanan and Famous are gonna try to sell those mixtapes. Well, they're on the corner trying to sell it, and then they got hassled by some cops who, let's keep it real, they were racist. Because they, they hemmed them up. I mean, you see these young boys selling some mixtapes. Talking about you don't have a permit to do that. Okay. Sir, suck a dick. That's all I got to say. So at one point, we saw Jukebox. So she had that card from Burke, and she has a picture of her mother. So we see her later up. She, later on, she met up with that woman, with Burke, and Burke gave her a file on her mother since she had been divorced twice. She doesn't have any kids, other kids, and she showed her, so she has an address, she says, is this her current address? I don't know if Burke said yes or no, but hey, whatever. So while I'm here, you guys, let's talk, let's throw Lou into this situation since I've already, since I talked about him at the studio. So Lou, we see him back in the studio and he's in there with Crown. So you guys know that he found that artist, Zisa. He thinks that Zisa is, I guess he thinks Zisa gonna be the next big hit. I'm in agreement with Crown. I'm not that impressed by Zisa. Being real with you guys, wasn't that impressed by Zisa. So this guy by the name of Cartier comes into the studio with Zisa. He says that Zisa is, is his niece. She says he's not really my uncle. So Cartier wants to make a deal with Lou and with Crown. And it's for them to produce a single for her, right? Crown is like, no, we're not doing that. Because that still doesn't mean she's going to sign to our label. But Lou agreed to it. I was like, I don't know if that was smart, Lou. This girl, can she sing? Yes. Is she going to be an A-list celebrity for singing? No. 
I don't think so. So then we see Lou and Jessica. So they're in the studio at one point, right? They were about to get it on and popping. And she told him that she's going to be moving to L.A. because Crown got her a job in L.A. And she's leaving tomorrow. Lou was like, Crown? She's like, don't be mad at Crown because it wasn't just him. It was me. Bye, Jessica. I don't ever got to see Jessica again. Goodbye and good riddance to Jessica. Scooch, Jessica. Go away. So we see Jessica as she was leaving. That's all I got for Jessica. I ain't got nothing else for Jessica. Goodbye, girl. Let's pause here and let's move forward. All right, guys. So next up, I want to talk about Unique real quick. So we see Unique. So Unique is out of jail. You guys remember that the cops found out that Unique actually had an alibi. And I'll talk about that in just a minute as well, where his alibi was, because the cops talked to Howard about it. So Unique is staying with his baby mama's mama, and she ain't really feeling it. And he was like, you know, you weren't doing all this complaining when I was paying for your rent, sending you and your church members to AC and all this kind of stuff, right? So his baby mama, whose name I don't know right now, she told him that she she was at the bodega and i'll talk about the bodega in a little bit as well she was at the bodega and as rock was walking out rock scared her he's like man you ain't got to worry about rock i'm like you think unique i mean rock set you up to go to jail for something that she put canon up to doing and you saying she ain't got to worry about rock bitch i would be worried about rock every day of the week i would be worried about rock so then we see Unique as he went to go see Dean. So when he got there, Dean's security told him, nah, you ain't finna see Dean. But Dean came and got Unique, right? So they sat down and talked. And Unique wants to get back into business with Dean. And Dean is like, absolutely not. You are not a safe investment. He was like, I ain't popped that cop. He said, but they're still investigating you. He's like, maybe I'm just an interesting person. Okay, well, interesting person. See you later. I don't want to have anything to do with that. That Nah, that ain't good for business. That ain't good for business, right? So then after that, we um, see Unique. So Unique is at his spot and it looked like his spot has been ransacked. It don't look like it. That shit had been ransacked. So Warrell came down, right? So Unique tells Warrell like, hey, Warrell, so I need you and the team back together again. And Warrell was like, I'm sorry. I can't ride with you. So he was like, you on that, so he's like, so you on Rock's dick now? Yep, look like he is on Rock's dick. You guys, um, let's, let me talk about Rock real quick. I see, you know, in like in Power Book 2, we've talked about Monet, how she kind of have similarities, how some of us say, I feel like she has some similarities to Ghost, but if I'm going to be honest, if anybody really has some similarities to Ghost, it is Rock. It is Rock. Rock doesn't want to take any, and she doesn't want to listen to what anybody has to say. It's her way or no way. And that's going to be, I, as much as I like Rock, that's going to be her downfall. That is going to be her downfall that she is so headstrong and that she doesn't listen to people. That's going to be her downfall. Ultimately, that's what's going to be her downfall. I see her, now when I say suffer the same fate as Ghost, she's going to, you know, people are going to, Everyone is going to start to hate her. People are going to start to hate her and want to take her out. That's what I see when it comes to Raquel. I don't see Kanan taking his mama out like Tariq did. I just see that everyone that is in her corner currently, she's going to alienate so many people and they're going to be dead set against her going forward. I just kind of feel, I just have a feeling that that's going, what's going to happen with Raquel. But let's pause here, you guys. And let's move forward. All right, you guys, so let's talk about Raquel real quick. So we see Rock. So remember, last week's episode ended with her meeting up with Detective Howard, right? So I told you guys, Howard remembers exactly who shot him. He's just protecting Kanan. So he said that, you know, he should have died that night, but he made a deal with God to right his wrongs. And he told her that basically Kanan can't shoot for shit. And that night that Kanan shot him, he noticed that, you know, you want him in this game, in this, this life ain't meant for Kanan. And he says, you know, he wants to get to know his son. She's like, you know, I had a lot of people who was who, who admired me back in the day. I don't even know who his, who his daddy is. He says, well, the funny thing is, the night that he got into a fight, he came in, he was leaking. I got some of his blood, and I went and had a DNA test ran on the slick. And turns out I am his father. So I wanted you to tell him, but now I'm going to have to sit down and talk to him my damn self and tell him that I'm his daddy. But you ain't got to worry about me, you know, um, telling nobody that he's the one that popped me. And he also tells her that scrap. 
your boy Scrap, the one-eyed Jack, he's a snitch. And she's like, what? So then we see Rock. So she's telling, you know, Lou and Marvin, you know, what Howard told her about Scrap being a snitch. So Rock feels like at this point with Scrap, you know, snitching on them, they got to take out our boy Scrap. And, you know, um, Lou said, it ain't going to be me. So what she wants for Mark, so she wants Marvin to talk to Scrap and, fig, you know, fill Scrap out and see what he can find out. So then we see them as they're having a meeting with Warrell. And, you know, basically, Warrell was like, you know, we all got a, a tricky past. She was like, you know, the past is the past. But she feels they can bring, he, he can bring them some value. And more so because of the people, Kim and his crew getting scooped up on the streets by the cops. Don't none of them need that. So come work it up, come work for us. You won't be on the streets. You and your guys won't be getting picked up. And it's a win-win. And you're going to be working with um Lou. So I guess Lou, now remember, in last week's episode, Lou said he didn't want to do that. But I guess she, here we go again with Rock. Rock inf- uses her muscle. And I, like I said, I think that's going to be one, or I think that's going to be her downfall, is the fact that she, it's her way or no way. She doesn't take input from anybody. And there's one person in his family that I can understand her not taking any input from, and it's Marvin. Because we know Marvin is a fuck up, right? But Lou is your right hand man. And it doesn't feel, to me, watching it, it doesn't feel like Lou is really her right hand man. Because she doesn't listen to anything from Lou. Like, if we're going to, like, if if we're thinking about all, if we think about every friend, every part of power, right? Like, let's go back to, let's go to book two, right? With Monet. Her right hand, why am I using an air quote? Her right hand man is, um, what the hell is her son's name? Um, oh shit, what is his name? Lorenzo Jr. I can't even think of his name right now. But y'all know, that's her right hand man. Not Drew. Kane. Kane. Y'all know Kane is Monet's right hand man, right? But even with Monet and Kane, we all know that Cain makes rash decisions. So I understand why Monet is the way she is with Cain. Cain makes rash decisions. And let's even go back to your original power with Ghost and Tommy. Ghost and Tom, Tommy was Ghost's right-hand man. But Tommy is the same way. Tommy makes very rash decisions. He does things that he doesn't think things through. But with his book, he's, he's being a little bit more rational now that he doesn't have his brother Ghost around, right? And with book three, Rock's right-hand man is Lou. Lou is sensible. Lou thinks things through. But when he, when he gives his opinions to Rock, Rock never listens to him. Rock doesn't listen to him. And I, I, I don't understand that. It's like, girl, you are doing yourself a disservice. Like, like that's what happened when, 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 him, when he got caught in that fire last season. It was because of his sisters. Like, it's going to... Like I say, that's going to be the rock not listening to people and rock not valuing people's input is going to be a detriment to rock. As much as I love rock, it's going to be a huge detriment to her. I just wonder how, I just wonder how long before some people, turn, before the people in her corner turn on her because it's going to happen eventually. It's going to happen where people are going to turn on her. So then we see rock. So rock is down at the bodega and we find out that the bodega got some big ass rats, obviously, and the rats have been eating up her shit. And Juliana was like, "Girl, you got all this money, but you won't pay for you won't pay to get something done." Rock tells her to get an, you know, put out some rat traps. She's girl, I would be putting out rat traps at least seven, uh, multiple times in the day. She's okay. We're calling exterminator. Okay, girl, I get okay. Now here's the question: Were the rats eating up money, or were the rats eating up her drugs? Because I couldn't really tell what was being ate up if you guys could see let me know in the comment section right and that's when she saw um unique's baby mama she gave that i mean she gave that woman a death stare i was like damn i would be afraid if i was that woman you know it's so interesting one other thing it's so interesting because i was watching this video on twitter this week with patina and the young man that plays canaan right it's so interesting to hear their actual real voices 
it's interesting to hear him because I'm so used to hearing Bettina talk with this New York accent. I'm like, I forget. I'm like, so she's not really. I'm like, and I have to think. I'm like, wait, I thought they were all from. I really thought that they cast people from New York because that that New York accent and it is her voice is actually a little bit higher than where she talks on the show. Her voice is low on the show, but when she talks, it's a little bit higher. I was like, wait a minute. That ain't what? Just kind of caught me off guard. But uh, yeah. So then we see Rock. So Rock is looking, I guess Rock is looking for a new a new place for them to live. And the woman that she, the realtor that she was talking to, I, I guess that woman said, you a, little, you a nigga and you ain't got money like that. Cause she's like, you credit this, you gotta have, um, I need your tax returns from last year and the year before and all this. She says, I'm paying in cash. That shut that woman up real quick. So then we see Howard. So remember, I told you guys earlier that Unique, remember, Unique got you let go. So they're telling Howard that they still don't have, know who shot him because Unique had an alibi. They got him on camera at a McDonald's drive through And Howard is still pretending like he doesn't remember anything. They said the only thing that they have is a crackhead who claims he saw a kid, but he was high out of his mind that night. So then we see Rock. So Rock is having a conversation with Kano, right? And she asked him, like, where were you at? He said he had been with fame. And she says, he asked her, like, Ma, what's wrong? She says, oh, nothing. But then she says, well, you know, that cop that you shot, his brain was a little fucked up. So if he comes to you saying anything, just keep that in mind. I'm like, damn, Rock. Because <laughs> what, you know, because remember, Howard told her that he was going to tell Kanan that he's his dad. I'm like, girl, what if he goes to that boy with the DNA test? to prove to him that he is his father. How do you deny, how do you say that that man's brain is still fucked up? If he got, I mean, he gave you the DNA test, you threw it on the ground and told him basically F that DNA test. So I don't, now when it comes to Raquel, and I, I, get, I know why she's told people that Def Con was his father, but why lot of Canaan is what I, I still have yet to understand. Why lot of Canaan? I don't get that part. That part I don't get. But hey, let me know what you guys think about that. And we're going to go ahead and pause here and wrap up the episode. All right, you guys. So we see Marvin. So Marvin is at anger management, right? So the woman is asking the people in anger management what triggers them. So this guy named Gerald, I said, why does his name have to be Gerald? That is my first name. So she asks him what triggers him. And he says people ignoring him. So then she asks another woman. She's like, what triggers you? So that lady says people lying to me. And then she says, Marvin. What triggers you? Marvin says, I'm good. Don't nothing trigger me. So Gerald says, if you're so good, why are you in here with us? Marvin says, Gerald, I'm ignoring you because I know that's what you like. Marvin was taunting that man. And I'm like, Marvin, that man said, I'll kick your fucking ass. And Marvin says, I would like to see you try it. <laughs> but the teacher was like, you know what, Marvin? I'm going to let that slide today. But tomorrow, the next time you come back, I want you to participate. So then we see Marvin. Now you guys remember, I told you earlier that Rock wanted for Marvin to pull up on Scrap, you know, fill Scrap out to see if he is actually a rat, right? So he pulled up on Scrap at this, while Scrap was working. Scrap is, you know, he, he feeling everything, right? So Marvin says, you know, I couldn't raise, uh, he couldn't raise him, he had a pickup. So Scrap says, well, you know, um, he was helping, he was helping a cousin out there in um i forgot where he said he was helping a cousin in some other area and you know scrap i'm not scrap but marvin's like i didn't even know you had family out there it ain't got nothing to do with you so he says why why didn't you call the new guy warrell the nigga that took my eye baby when scrap was talking about that eye he was pissed he was pissed 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 scrappy is pissed off right so um after that, we see Marvin. So Marvin, he went to go see this cousin, right? Pretending like he is some kind of, what he, I forgot what he pretended like he was. The girl was like, really? What kind of plumber or something like that drives a goddamn Lexus or whatever he was driving, right? But she told him, she ultimately told him that she ain't had nothing put up on her wall since, the, since she put up an MJ post and that was a few years ago, right? So now Scrap, now, um, you know, Marvin is looking like, damn, is Scrap fucking with us? Like, is Scrap being a rat? Whew. Mm-mm-mm. 
So then we see Marvin. So Marvin went to see his lawyer, right? So his, he's telling his lawyer, like, you know, you told me all I had to go do was go sign in and leave. This woman, she wants me to sit there and actually participate in the class. He was like, well, you know, some of them go with the program. Some of them don't. So tough toenail, basically. So then he also tells him that he found Tony. And Tony is engaged to be married to a dentist. I was like, well, damn, Tony didn't waste no time. Tony said, get me the fuck out of here. And I'm going I'm to reinvent a whole new life for myself. And that's exactly what the bitch did. Can I say I'm mad at her? No. So then we next see Marvin. So Marvin is talking to Rock and Lou, right? And he's telling them, like, you know, I sat down and I talked to Scrap, but I'm not really sure if Scrap is, you know, on a, if, if Scrap is really a rat or not, right? But he did tell her that, you know, I did go to, to you know, see his cousin that he said, he, you know, he helped her put up something. But she didn't know nothing. She knew nothing about what I was talking about. So I really don't know what to do. So Rock, once again, Rock feels like it's time to take Scrap. I'm like, damn, but Scrap has been pretty loyal to y'all for a long time. I mean, this nigga done lost the eye because of y'all. So, eh. But if Scrap is a rat, Scrap is a rat. You know what, you know what they say, snitches get stitches. So, eh, it is what it is. So, you guys, at the end of the episode, we see Marvin, Lou, and Scrap. They in the car, right? So Scrap think that they taking him to where the new spot is, where they're going to be doing business. Scrap is hype. Scrap is happy. Scrap is full of, you know, feeling it. Like, yeah, we finna do this. We finna do that. Da, 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 da. So they pull up to it. I'm like, Scrap, you not the least bit, oh, you not the slightest bit worried about this shit? Like, it's nighttime. Like, we couldn't come here during the day. We couldn't come here doing I, I, I was like, Scrap, I just wouldn't have trusted this. We could, I would have been like, yo, we couldn't come here during the day so I could really see the place. It's pitch black. And you see, like, it looked like homeless people on the street. She, it looked like crackheads on the street. I would have been like, so we couldn't come here during the day? Why are we here late at night? Yeah, watching Power, any other powers, lets me know, bitch, he ain't cut out for the drug. I wouldn't, I wouldn't last a day being a drug dealer i wouldn't last a day i wouldn't last five minutes being a drug dealer it it just would not be the lifestyle for me absolutely not Mm-mm, bitch no 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 so they pull up to the where i think it, it looks like it's a warehouse right so they pull up there and they go inside scrap is all happy i was like so who's gonna be the one that's gonna shoot scrap because I know it's con- I know that this is the setup for Scrap to be unlived. I was like, Lou said it ain't going to be him. I was like, oh, shit, please don't look. Because he turned around. And when he turned, he had his back to Lou and Marvin. I was like, well, I guess it's going to be Marvin. I guess it's going to be Marvin. Then out of his peripheral, a gun appears. I was like, oh, shit. And pop, he got popped. And then the camera pans over and it was none other than Rock. I was like, well, damn, bitch. You, <sighs> girl, Rock is fucked up. Hell, you see Lou and, you see Lou and Marvin's face. You see their faces and they were just, they were hurt. They were hurt. Scrap said he had been down with them since he was 14 years old. That is fucked up. Mm, 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 mm. Now, Rock, I want, uh, here's the thing about Rock. He's a CI. He's a, comp, he, he's a, he's an informant, right? So, you don't think, like, this is the thing that blows me right here with Rock. Howard told you about Scrap being a CI. You didn't think that that was a setup? You didn't, I mean, uh, like, you know, he'll protect Kanan. I don't really believe that Howard has any loyalty, any allegiance to Raquel. So I just kind of find it kind of odd that she would do that. Hmm. I mean, there are no witnesses around. That's a good, there's, that's a good thing. There's no witnesses, but. Well, I guess, you know what she can, I guess. When you think about it, and, the, and you, when you actually sit and think about it, when I'm talking out loud, Howard did tell her about Scrap being a CI. 
Howard can't say anything because if he says anything, then that will let the, the police department know that he has some kind of dealings when it comes to Raquel. So, okay. So I guess Raquel, for now, I guess you say for now, for now. I just don't know if that was, I just feel like some of the stuff that she's doing is going to backfire on her. I don't, I don't think she's making good to sound decisions this season so far. Taking out Scrap was not a good decision, I don't think. Working with Warrell is not a good decision. I think with this season, I don't know how I'm going to feel about Rock. And you guys know, like last season, I love Raquel up until the finale. I feel like I'm, pro I hope, I'm hoping that they don't write Raquel in the direction that they did Ghost. That is one thing that I'm hoping that they don't do because I actually like Raquel, but I just don't know how I'm feeling about her at this particular moment, so to speak. But um, that's it, you guys. Let me know what you guys thought about this episode. Drop down in the comment section and subscribe to the channel. Turn on your post notifications. Share the video, you guys. And until the next time, you guys, please stay safe out there. Take care of yourselves, you guys. Wash your hands. Wear a mask. Socially distance. Be blessed. And I'll catch you guys in the next one. Bye, guys.